Hi guys, um, I'm going to actually do a bonus, bonus video. This one, I've got two people that I'm going to talk about. And both, I was originally going to put them both in the same video. But I'll probably put them in separate videos. Um, um, I know there wasn't a video over the weekend. We struggled to think of a video. Hopefully there will be one this weekend because my book signing is on Friday night. And I'm hoping that my husband or my best friend's husband who's going to be there will be able to record some of it. So we hopefully, hopefully, we shall see. Um, I am so nervous but I'm so excited as I've got um, swag and things in here ready to go. I've um, got the books, I've got posters, I've got lots, uh, lots and lots of stuff that I need to get packed and sorted. I am so nervous but I am. I'm excited and nervous at the same time. So, so right, this video is going to be, be about Casey Neistat. And if you don't know who Casey Neistat is, then that's a bit weird. He is a big YouTuber. He has a lot of subscribers and he is, to some people, he's very polarizing. He's received a lot of backlash over several things. Uh, a couple of which I'm going to talk about here and although I don't watch a lot of him I did watch the um, podcast interview that he did with Philip DeFranco at Vlogger which was really good, I enjoyed that and he got heated because obviously they have opposing views on certain things um, and the fact that Casey essentially sold out with his company and this time Phil said that's not going to happen. It happened last time but it's not happening this time. I said I did see him on a couple of the Jesse Jean vlogs and he was very, he seemed very nice in that but when I saw him in those I didn't know who he was and through Philip DeFranco on a few other channels I found out who he was. And there's a few things about him that puzzle me. There's a few things about him that unsettle me. And some of it is just my opinion of him. And it's my feeling of him. And But some of it is um, related to other stuff that I'm going to go through. I don't have much on this person or the other person I'm going to do. But I want to separate it into two separate videos for you. So. Right. Unless you're not aware, he had a company where he created an app. The app wasn't amazing and he didn't, it wasn't like PewDiePie's app or some of the other apps that um, YouTubers have done that have gone really, really, they've done really well. But he, he, it was bought out by CNN, which is one of the biggest, one of America's biggest, biggest news networks. But he seems to think that CNN won't influence him with stories, etc. And I think that that's naive um, because they're using the company framework to create like a news network app type thing. And he's got it in his head that he's going to have full create the, the, the people who work for him. So he still does run the company. It's just owned by CNN. And he thinks that he's going to be able to do whatever he wants. He's going to be able to say whatever he wants. But I think that that's naive. I think that at first they're going to say to him, yeah, you can do whatever you want, you do whatever you want. And then as time goes by, they're going to pull the reins a little bit. And it's one of those things Phil used to have it when he was on my discovery, which isn't even a news network. But when he was on my discovery, there were certain stories he couldn't do, there were certain words he couldn't say, there were certain opinions he couldn't have or voice because he worked for another company and because the other company would kick off because of him wanting to do something that they don't want him to do. 
and that's from a, that's from a network that's not even a news network. Discovery is not a news network at all. CNN is. It's like Phil would never sell out to a news network because, especially the major networks in America, because the people that on those networks have political leanings and the entire organisation leans that way. And the sheer fact that Casey thinks that he's going to have full control over what they do, to me is idiotic. If I had a channel the size that Casey does, or the size that Phil does, and somebody offered me money, I'd turn around and say no. If I were able to run my channel as a business, because I had extra, you know, X amount of subscribers, I would do. However, I wouldn't sell it because then the opinions that I have would have to go through the filter of the company that owns the app. Now at first he might not get the you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to say this, you have to say that. But there is no guarantee that in five, six, seven years time that's not going to happen. Because when Phil first sold out to Discovery there wasn't an issue with what he could say. It's only towards the end that they started saying, you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't say this, you can't say that. That's the way it works when, you, when you're owned by a big company, and especially one with political ideologies, like CNN, or like Fox, or like in this country, you've got all the newspapers that are owned by different people, that all have different leanings, one, one's more conservative, one's more... Um, Weber, it's the same thing and it's to me it's very naive and very he's the moon cloud cuckoo land that one I hope that CNN proved me wrong but I don't think they will in a couple of the videos that him and Jesse have done to promote say um, a car or one was for a car and one was for a smartphone and they both they, they work together on a video because they're both very cinematic, very, very good vloggers and they have very artistic styles which is fine however in one of the videos um, if I can find the thumbnail I'll pop it here the thumbnail is Jesse and Casey in the background and two women in the front ground wearing hardly anything. Now on most people's channel that would get flagged, but his didn't. In most people's channel that would get demonetized, but his didn't. You know, it's, I'm not, um, I'm not one of these people that say women can't be sexual objects. I'm bisexual. I look at women and I think they're hot. Just like I look at men and I think they're hot. Now, when it comes to people like them, who in, at the time of both videos were in a relationship, one was in a relationship with Gina, the other one was in a relationship with, I think, his wife, and they were using women in the video as sexual objects to sell something in a forum like YouTube, and it doesn't get flagged, but you get other people that are literally just walking along the beach in a bikini and they get flagged. Or they're sat in a bathtub but you can't see anything but they get flagged. To me that's idiotic. At the end of the day, if if I was able to do the level of vlogs or to do the level of recording that they could, I would do something slightly different. And there is some to do with the uh, fact that they were both ads, uh, sponsored videos, I'll get onto that point in a minute. But with relation to this one, it's very, it's very much to me like, oh, we know if we put scantily clad women in the thumbnail, everybody will come, especially male teenagers. And it'll get us, it'll get us views, 
it'll probably get clicks over to the um, person that they're doing the sponsored video for, etc. Now I don't mind sponsored videos as long as you do it right. And here for the tea goes a lot more into things like this than I do and I will actually send you over to her with relation to some of these video topics. Now, with relation to the sponsored videos, in a sponsored video, you are supposed to say in the video, by law, by FCC law, that it is a sponsored ad. And you are also supposed to put it in the description. Now I know a lot of makeup people don't say it in the video. And when they do say it in, in the description, it's right at the bottom, which nobody looks at. They did put it in the video right at the end after the credits. To me, the way I've seen Phil do his sponsors, the way I've seen Living Rose do their sponsors, um, Gina, she does lots of these for sponsors, for sponsorships, and the way they do it is they tell you a the ad right at the beginning and b they either put it on the screen or they verbally tell you this is an ad this video is sponsored by putting it at the end of a video at the end of the credits for uh, which might nobody ever watch it so they won't realize that it's a sponsored video to me is idiotic and to me is bordering on being on, on illegal now i don't have sponsor videos i'm not big enough and if i ever did i'd be blatantly honest with you and i will tell you that it's a sponsored video right from the get-go now do i think that they broke the law no because it was at the end of the it was in the video and it was in the description it just wasn't you know how when you watch the video on desktop and if sometimes on your mobile the first few lines of the description are visible if they'd have put it in that part of the description or they'd have put it right at the beginning of the video i wouldn't have an issue with it if they'd have put right at the beginning of the video this one the video is sponsored by say samsung or whatever then i wouldn't have an issue but because it's right at the end at the end of the credits, to me, is idiotic. And Phil even took Casey to task on this topic because he actually called him out on his channel about this topic and about how idiotic it was for him to do that. And because a lot of people didn't watch to the end of the video and they didn't realise it was a sponsored video. And a lot of people called Casey out on this and he couldn't understand why when it was in the video and it's like yeah but it's right at the end at which point nobody's watching it anymore because as soon as you take the eye candy off nobody watches it they just go right next video they're not bothered about it being at the end which is why i like it when it's right at the beginning or in the middle where they actually said this video is sponsored by like i say beauty vloggers do it a lot where they'll have a sponsored video but they won't say it's a sponsored video, which is breaking FCC rules. And then they do put it in the description, like I said, right at the bottom, or so quite a far down. And a lot of people don't always check that far down in the description. I know I'm I'm guilty of that all the time. Oh, right. He forces his politics onto his channel, which is not usually a politically motivated channel. Now, if it was somebody like Blair, Dave Rubin, The Young Turks, 12 Point Phil, I understand him, set, him doing the video that he did where he said, I'm with Hillary. I'm voting for Hillary and this is why you should vote for Hillary. Up until that point, he barely talked politics. He barely mentioned it. And for him to turn around and say that he was voting for Hillary and you should too, and that he wanted everybody else to do the same video, to me it is unfair. In this instance, I don't understand why he sought the need to tell everybody who he was voting for, telling other YouTubers to do the same thing and explain who they're voting for and why. Now, 
I understand that he was hoping to get units just to vote. However, it doesn't work like that. Getting young people to vote is an issue in both the UK and the US, and it probably is in lots of other countries as well. And the thing is, in the US, the issue wasn't the people's vote, because the people's vote doesn't do anything in the US. As far as I understand, it's the electoral vote, and the vast majority of those voted Donald Trump in. Now, the issue with that is, case of telling other people who to vote for, or I'm voting for this person and this is why, is to me something he shouldn't have done. Because, like I said, if it was Blur who would have done it, I'd have understood because she does touch politics. If it was Ruben, Dave Ruben, I'd understand it. If it was the Young Turks, I'd understand it. If it was Phil, I'd understand it. However, somebody like Casey, who does cinematic vlogs about his life in places where he visits, where he lives, and he's, you know, I, you know his day to day life, then I get it. But to suddenly involve politics is, to me, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense at all. And I think it was a bad, bad move. And I know a lot of people were like, not keen on, not sure what to think on that. Something I noticed with the podcast with him and Phil is every time Phil tried to make a point, he would try and turn the conversation to something he wanted, or he would dominate the conversation because I didn't know that most of the time Casey was talking and Phil couldn't speak that often, and Phil couldn't make his points in the work, but several times where Phil, you could see him starting to get wound up because he wanted to have his say in case he wasn't letting him. Now, do I like Casey? Not really. Do I like Phil? Yes. I am very biased when it comes to Phil. He is one of my favourite YouTubers and I adore the guy. Now, in my opinion, when you talk to somebody, when you have a conversation with somebody, when they speak, you listen, which feels great at, which is why I enjoy watching a lot of his podcasts, because that's what he's good at. He's good at talking to people, letting them speak and taking in what they've said, and then having a conversation on that topic. He did um, a podcast with Dave Rubin not long ago, and I loved that video. And it, it was a very reciprocal thing where um, Phil would speak, David listen, and then David speak, and Phil would listen. But the KC was very much, he wanted to do all the speaking, wanted to do all the talking, he wouldn't take Phil's points on board, he wouldn't listen to Phil's opinions. And when it comes to YouTube, I think Phil being on YouTube for as long as he has, and working under several companies, which he has in the past, and he's been managed by several MCMs, then that's fine. But he has a lot more experience with a lot of things that Casey doesn't. And when Phil's trying to say, in the long run, this is what's going to happen because this is what happened to me, Casey would not listen. <laughs> and that just made me mad because Phil was trying to help. Phil was trying to get set to him, this is what's happened to me, this is what's probably going to happen to you, etc. But he wouldn't listen. And. This is just a personal gripe of mine. He uses extremely ex expensive cameras, extremely expensive drones, and he's very much, you've got to have this camera to vlog, you've got to have this camera to vlog, you've got to have this, you've got to have that, you've got to have this. Whereas I'm like, bitch please. A lot of the best vlogs I've seen have either been shot on a mobile or a basic camera. When you vlog it, the last thing you need is a really expensive camera because nine times out of ten, it's going to get damaged. There are multiple times where I've watched Jenna and Julian in one of Julian's vlogs and he breaks something because he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing with the camera. Now, do Julian's vlogs look better with the better cameras? Yes. 
but to me, when you, if, you, if it's something that you do every day, and it's a camera that you're going to be using every day in various locations, it's probably better to get one that has a decent megapixel size and a decent graphic size that's not as expensive than buying a four grand one that you can break quite easily. Now, people might disagree with me on that. The camera I use is a very basic camera. Um, it is, it's a Sony basic camera and it's, it was supposed to be 180, I've got it 150. But that's what I'm using. I was, when I first started this channel, I was using a webcam, which was even worse. But this is better than what I was using. Um, because I'm recording in the days, I can speak louder because the neighbours aren't to sleep. But when he uses these cameras and he's like, you have to use this camera to vlog, you have to do this, you have to do that. And it's like, not all of us are made of money. My channel doesn't make much money. Um, at the minute, I'm at my highest um, estimated revenue, which is about $10 because I've had a lot of very popular videos, namely the dry ones, of late. And people like him, who get several million views, are making bank off those views. And to me it's... He's very much, to me, because he's probably part of the top, I don't know how many, 10% of YouTube that earn a substantial amount of money. He gets very, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. To me, that doesn't make any sense. To me, that's not true to reality because I don't have the money to, to go on to N3 grand on a camera or a six grand on a laptop. I just don't. I wish I did, but I don't. And he's like, well, you have to edit with this software. I'm using the basic Windows Movie Maker on my computer because my computer's that old that it can't hack anything else. So I'm using basic Windows Editor on a computer that's like seven years old. But he's expecting everybody to listen to what he's saying and do what he says you should do. And it's like, bitch, please. This is another thing I noticed in the interview I did with Phil, is he's very forceful in his views and he tries to get you to bend to his view and to the way he thinks. Because yeah, I could, I saw him do that a lot with Phil and I could see Phil getting really, really mad about it because Phil's not one of those people that pushes opinions on other people, but he's like, um, cases like this is this and this is this and Phil's like, hold on a minute, no. But then, it's just pushing it and 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 it's like for god's sake just shut the fuck up and let phil talk for crying out loud you know what i mean it's like will you please just shut your goddamn mouth and let somebody else speak and listen to their views and why they think that way instead of saying this is what i think and this is how you should think and I see things this way and when Phil says well I've experienced this and he just discredits that I just yeah and that irritated me watching that video I just felt dirty after watching it I don't know why it's just me those are the main issues that I have with Casey Neistat now he might be a nice guy in my life but what I've seen of him I don't like. I really don't like. But that's just me. Right, I'm gonna jump and do the next video in a minute. Um, which is about the true king of YouTube, which is PewDiePie. So I'll probably release this on Wednesday, the PewDiePie video Thursday, and then Friday I have one that's sort of YouTube related, but sort of crime related. You'll understand when you see it. Right, with that being said, stay safe, have fun, be good, and I will see you tomorrow.